Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind the scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. 52 million years ago, Wyoming was a tropical forest. In this episode, we speak with Lance Grandy about his research and many discoveries in this area. My name is Lance Grandy, and I am currently the uh, head of collections and research here at the Field Museum, but I am also a curator in the geology department. Well, another one of my favorite uh, research projects is looking at a um, probably the world's most productive freshwater fossil locality in southwestern Wyoming in the Green River Formation. Uh, it's a 52 million year old lake bed that I work in every summer and have for about the last 30 years. And it's just an absolutely amazing locality. Um, once you get to this treasure trove of fossils, which is under about 30 feet of overburden, you're at about a 20 inch thick unit that we just take up a quarter inch to a half inch at a time. And every piece you lift up, you almost always find fossils underneath. It's like turning the pages in a, in a book and seeing a whole community that lived 52 million years ago. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. You have everything there from uh, fossilized bacteria, if you take thin sections, to 13-foot crocodiles and palm fronds, birds. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. But the locality is probably most famous for the fish fossils because it was a lake, and so the most common creatures there were aquatic creatures. Well, you're starting to find a mixture of families of organisms that are extinct today and families that are very diverse today. So, for example, with the birds, you have the first examples of a lot of different modern bird families appearing there. And today, some of these families have diversified uh, into either hundreds or thousands of different species. With fishes, um, we see uh, some of our earliest representatives of many groups like pikes, but we also see the uh, latest members of a lot of groups. There's a group called the Illimichthyidae, which is ex has been extinct for 40 some million years. Um, it was one of the more common fishes back in the, uh, in the lake of the Green River system. It is this odd mix of families that are just coming into being and families that are becoming extinct. But it also is an interesting picture because we have a lot of things that today live in tropical environments like uh, bony tongue fishes and, and uh, a number of other groups that are alive in um, the Green River Formation. But once that subtropical environment disappears, they become extinct in North America. You could say that the Green River Formation story begins much earlier than the 52 million years ago where I'm working. Um, in fact, in the, in the beginning of the story for the Green River Formation, you have to go back to the Cretaceous, where North America was actually divided up into two subcontinents by a huge seaway that cut it completely apart by as, as much as a thousand mile wide seaway. And so for all practical purposes, um, there was no single North American continent. And in fact, the Western North American subcontinent was connected to Asia at the time. And so there were a lot of Asian um, North American species that didn't occur in Eastern North America. At the close of the Cretaceous, we have the disappearance of this huge seaway because of great mountain uplift, and the whole region was uplifting. And uh, that's part of what eventually formed the Green River Lake system. Um, it was basically a runoff basin for drainage in the surrounding mountains. But as the seaway um, um, became obliterated and we had one single North American continent, 52 million years ago we still had this hugely strong influence from the Asian uh, connection that had existed before. And if you look at the relatives of the things that um, are found in the Green River Formation, you'll find that many of them have their closest um, transoceanic relatives or their closest relatives anywhere in China or some other part of Asia. 